How's it going guys? We have a great tutorial with director Matt Alonzo coming up. Stay tuned till the end to figure out how to get my favorite transition packs and VFX packs. How's it going guys? It's Josh Olufemi. Mr. Matthew Alonzo. I specifically for this video want to talk about something that uh, Matt taught me a while ago. When you're shooting a music video, specifically when you're editing a music video, yeah. what did you tell me regarding uh, the you, you, how many setups do you usually have for a music video for a 12 day shoot? Like I mean, 12 hour shoot. 12 hour shoot and normally I have any. I mean, I try to have at least four to five setups. I mean, bare minimum, and okay. uh, you know, as many as I can, the better for me and okay. for the and for the video. Um, and, and it has a lot to do with this, you know, this topic. Yeah. Um, it's really just to make sure that there's something constantly new for the viewer to see. Yeah. Uh, so they don't get bored. That's a big thing that I try to uh, make sure that I have. And it, even if I have a, a limited amount of um, performances, I still try to stretch them out. I just edited a music video um, and I showed it to Matt to take a look. And one of his first criticisms was you showed all the setups within like the first like verse and chorus or something. And I was like, but it was, it was so dope. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's right. like, why else do the audience need to continue watching at that point? You know, if, if you look boring. at it from, from an audience standpoint, you've already showed them everything, you know, and some directors yeah. do. I mean, there's a lot of big name directors who you watch their videos and within 30 or a, a minute, you can, the video has already been exposed. And, and yeah. at that point, you really, unless the artist is like really, really engaging, you tune out, you know what I mean? And yeah. um, and I I just have ADD like through the roof. So I tune out even if there's not, uh, yeah. even if they don't expose everything. So I really try to, well, what I really try to do is try to make somewhat of a story or a narrative with the performance scenes themselves. Okay. So there's always something new and you're kind of always escalating and you're, you're allowing, you know, the, the, um, the artists, whether it's their personality or their character traits um, to kind of show themselves gradually and, okay. and so you know and, and to keep keep the viewer engaged you know throughout the two three four minutes uh, song so basically say you had say you had five setups maybe show like the first setup in the first verse and chorus and then maybe sneak two more setups when, I, when we say setups we mean like uh, like uh, different locations basically yeah, different locations. a lot of the time you're shooting one location you're trying to make it look like different yeah yeah just like a different wall or just yeah, yeah a different setup and so um, so like maybe two more locations you, you reveal in like the second verse and the second chorus and by the third chorus maybe you have like your grand location your yeah. your most impressive looking maybe yeah. You, yeah i mean and it's it's hard it's, it's there's, a, there's a fine balance because a lot of people say show 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 the stuff early so that people will want to watch until the very end which is is true in some point you know it's it's it does it does hold some validity but at the same time you know you're hoping that actually you know you can't be hoping you have to know that in your heart you, you have enough footage to carry it and that you they're gonna make it to the end so so if you have that sort of mentality going into the edit then then you're able to kind of stretch that out and and if you actually shoot for edit so you only shoot the second verse in that location and the only shoot the first verse in that location that kind of limits you already oh do you do that i don't do it that much because that would scare me yeah yeah i just don't know what i'm gonna use it at what point so yeah um, you know and, I, and i'm uh, you know i've been editing since i was a little kid you know so editing is like second nature to me so i try to shoot as much as i possibly can at least i have it in the can but if you do um you know fight with that or struggle with that later in in in, in post it's something that you could use on your next video to only shoot certain parts in each location so that you, you know when you go back you don't have too many options yeah and you know you kind of your video kind of edits itself okay Second thing that you taught me, I don't ever, I feel like, shoot quite enough B-roll during music videos, and I'm always left struggling in post. Is this something that you've, you've dealt with? I mean, I've dealt with a little bit. Um, what, I've, what I found early on was B-roll to us, I guess, it's, it's a little bit different. I mean, there's, there's two types of B-roll, I would say, for me personally. Okay. Well, three types. I mean, one would be just a complete separate story or separate, like, uh, you know, some dancers or something that's not really uh, congruent with your actual performances. Okay. Um, but when I think of B-roll, I think more so slow motion without any words of your actual artist. Oh, and, okay. And that's kind of what I use as B-roll. So, so times where they're not always performing, so it's not just constant, constant, constant to the camera. You yeah. give them a little bit of, 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 of breath. Um, and then there's the B-roll, like, um, the the more cut-ins, I guess, that like the like the uh, the lolly video where there's like the dice, yeah, the, dice like, and lollipops and, and things place, they're yeah. talking about. There's yeah. that type of of, of, of b-roll which I, I consider cutaways, I guess, more so, okay. just so that I have that title. And, it matches the lyrics, maybe. Yeah, and what I do with that is um is really just 
schedule out time for it and, and make sure that it's it's just as important as the setup okay um and then what i do for b-roll of the artist is i try to play the song and then maybe like the last verse or the last you know hopefully the song kind of like trails out so i tell them no performance for the last chorus and then i i'm able to capture that because i shoot everything in slow motion anyways okay so then i'm able to capture that uh all in one without having them reset repo and then do the whole thing over so i learned that early on when a lot, when a lot of the featured artists would want to leave instantly yeah so i i was i was like okay for the end part just don't sing the last hook we already have two or three hooks that i can use okay so just um you know just just give me some miming and some things like that that i can use slow motion and and to intercut through the performance nice yeah. oh, oh dope okay i get it like uh, and I think this leads me to the third thing that m- making sure that you have your beginning, your, your intro and your ending. Of course. I mean, that needs like, that needs to go into your to your treatment. treatment and if yeah. not your treatment, then once you get the video approved, then go into your, uh, you know, go into your, your shot list. Okay. And that's something that you need to, like, schedule out. You know, for me, it's always make sure I have the intro, the outro and, you know, any sort of cutaways that I'm going to do. Okay. Uh, or any sort of narrative that I'm going to do. That's 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 relatively top of my priority list. You know, yeah. performances are performances. They're they're relatively easy to to shoot and and they're kind of uh, I put, expected. I put way. I think I put way too much of my thought process into making sure the performances are right. And I think of intro, outro, B roll as secondary. Well, and that's not the case. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, I so now what I've what I've realized is that okay, I'm dealing with professionals, right? Okay. We're dealing with professionals who perform for a living so there's there's very little that i can bring out of them i mean there's there's things i can bring out of them but there's those things are going to happen naturally but for me i don't really i, I know the performance i'm going to get you know and there's very and if if their energy is not so much there what i normally do is is i start with a wide shot so okay uh sometimes the artists don't know the lyrics maybe or they're kind of just warming up so i start with the wide shot so that they don't really have to be so animated and um and then i'll kind of if they're not being as animated as i want i'll i'll you know crank up the shutter speed and and put it on my shoulder and move it around a little bit to create the energy on my own and and make them look like they have a little bit more energy but i know that lens distortion yeah lens distortion you know and and also editing tricks as well you know like you know as i shoot i can see the edit in my head so that kind of obviously that tremendously helps out you know what i mean but i don't focus so much on i guess getting like the performance because i know that's going to be like that's what we're here for for 12 hours you know okay so um so so that kind of helps me out a little bit so then i'm able to focus a little bit more on some of the things that um we tend to overlook you know okay and that comes from you know 300 music videos being shot 300 dang that's, matt you're that's, ridiculous that's just on a on a very light scale you know i don't i don't know the exact number no you i think i think you're, you're right yeah because yeah. i i've seen yeah you like it's up there it's definitely up there but i mean it's something that you learn over time and you know as you uh, no matter what somebody says to you you might be able to take it and 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 uh, you know apply it to your next video but it's kind of a learning thing you know and, and everyone has their own their own style their own structure and that's what kind of makes everybody unique yeah Matt, I always learn so much when I have you on the channel. Oh, man, I appreciate being here. Taking my own mental notes. I'm going to watch this video again, take some notes again. Come on now. Um, But thank you so much for watching all you guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill. Keep it chill. Before we head out, guys, I got to tell you about Envato Elements. It's a dope subscription service that gives you over 500,000 unlimited downloads for my favorite effects packs, transition packs, stock footage, and so much more. It's $33 a month, and I'm one of two YouTube channels that'll actually be able to get you $9 for the first month. Guys, check out this title pack that I'm actually using for a client project right now, and check out this new Instagram stories template that I just downloaded. The possibilities are limitless. Every subscription helps the channel out, so please check it out. And lastly, if you sign up within 24 hours of this video dropping, I'll send you a personal thank you video message on your IG. Thank you for supporting the channel, and I'll shout you out in the next vid. Just make sure to leave a quick DM on my Instagram, midbyolufemi, with your receipt so I know who you are. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, again, remember to keep it chill.